Oh, you're watching that soft skill channel again? I wonder why that is. If I now start to form theories, the conversation will most likely take a turn for the worse. And today, we'll find out why that is. Welcome to the soft skill channel. My name is Sebastian Jung and today it's about communication again. We discussed communication a lot on this channel. We learned a lot about how communication works. We learned to avoid a few pitfalls, how to avoid a few common problems in communication. But there is one problem we might even be more susceptible to because we have a bit of background knowledge. And that is analyzing and diagnosing and pathologizing. So what is this about? Let's have a look at some examples. <sighs> I'm so frustrated I didn't get that promotion. I worked so hard for it. Oh well, you've always been a sore loser with a huge ego. Oh, that colleague of mine. You wouldn't believe that guy. He caused such a mess and I will have to explain things to project management in the meeting later. Oh, damn. You're using the aggressive devaluating style again. Are you aware of that? I just want some more room for myself and some time for myself. You are so focused on yourself, you have strong narcissistic tendencies there. Maybe you should consider therapy. I think you understand uh, how this works. We listen to what the other person has to say and then we wonder, oh, where is this coming from? And then we form a theory and we tell the other person about it. And those theories can be based on a lot of things. Maybe we've observed some recurring uh, behavior patterns in the other party and we form a theory about their personality. Or we recognize typical patterns we know from communication psychology, for example, from the styles of communication by Schulz von Thun. Or we even recognize um, behavior that we believe is a sign of a mental disorder of a psychological problem. Um, there, I there aren't a lot of sources for this specific issue, or at least I don't know that many. Uh, it's a rather specific issue, of course, so you wouldn't write a whole book about this, but it merely appears in uh, some books. And uh, one I know is by Thomas Gordon. Thomas Gordon was a student of Carl Rogers, and he was an expert for um, families and raising children and he developed a program called parent effectiveness training where parents learned how to communicate with children and he wrote a book uh, under the same title parent effectiveness training where he described his teachings he used in that course and among other things in this book he describes 12 communication roadblocks those are behaviors that um, lead the conversation in a bad direction. We will discuss all of them here in the future. For today, we are just interested in number nine, which is interpreting, analyzing and diagnosing. According to Thomas Gordon, this is a problem because what we do is we basically tell the other party, I have you figured out, I know how you work, I know it better than yourself. And if we are right with our theory, the other person is embarrassed and exposed. If we are wrong, which is far more likely, the other party is angered and frustrated. So it doesn't actually matter whether we are right or wrong, it will lead to bad results either way. Gordon also emphasizes the negative subtext all those communication roadblocks, roadblocks have, the negative relationship messages that go along with them, such as it's your fault, um, I don't take your concern seriously, or especially here, I am smarter than you because I have you figured out. 
one aspect that um, I find rather important is that the um, specific concern, the specific topic that the other party brings up in the conversation is greatly devalued because we basically say oh this issue you have at the moment such as being frustrated because of that promotion you didn't get this is pretty much meaningless to me for me this is just one more sign of that behavior pattern i have identified um, and furthermore we uh, recently discussed the situation is hopeless but not serious by Paul Watzlawick where we came upon the topics of paradoxes and illusion of alternatives and this is something that also occurs here because what I basically say to the other person is I am normal, you are weird. And what options does the other person have in this situation? The first option is to accept and to say, oh, well, yeah, I, I guess I am weird, which is probably not desirable. The other option is to say, no, you're wrong. I'm not weird at all. In which case we could say, yeah, this is exactly the behavior I'm talking about. Your denial is just one more sign of this issue I have identified. So the other person is put into a position where he doesn't have any real options, a situation that he can't really get out of. <clears throat> Finally, another issue is that the other person most likely entered the conversation with some wishes or some hopes. In those examples I gave, the um, people probably hoped for understanding, maybe for comfort, maybe for encouragement. And uh, none of this is actually given by us if we start analyzing and so on. So... Um, we don't really provide what is needed in the situation. Um, when we deal with communication on this channel, when we discuss communication, the basic idea is first that we better understand communication, that we understand how it works. And in regard to actual day-to-day -day usage, the plan is that we learn to improve our own communication, that we learn to communicate better and that we are able to have a positive influence on a conversation and that we are able to steer a conversation in a positive direction. The idea is certainly not that we approach other people and tell them, oh, you are doing it wrong in regard to communication. Let me tell you how it's done right. This is certainly not the plan. So beware of interpreting, analyzing, diagnosing, um, make sure you don't fall into that trap. And be especially cautious of pathologizing, of um, jumping to conclusions and claiming that other people have some uh, mental disorder or some psychological problem. Um, a professional psychotherapist would never make up diagnosis on the fly. He doesn't walk around town saying, Oh, hey, saleswoman, do you still have this inferiority complex? Oh, look at that guy. He's a psychopath for sure. Hey, mailman, do you still have all those neuroses? No, a professional psychotherapist comes up with a diagnosis in a long and careful and professional process where he gets to know the patients, talk, uh, talk to the patient, where he uses um, um, professional methods for diagnosing mental disorders. He never just makes up a diagnosis based on some whim, based on some vague impression. And we, as laymen, should certainly not do that either. <clears throat> um, 
Now my examples were a bit exaggerated and you might wonder if I think I really have a point here, if I believe what I have come up with could really be helpful to the other person. For example, if I think that the other person is showing uh, behavior patterns that are detrimental, that are hurtful to themselves, and they could really benefit from stopping them. Now, what, what should I do? I don't want to just drop that. Well, in such a situation, first we should be quite self-critical. We should ask ourselves, where does this theory come from? Is it maybe based on anger or frustration? Are we frustrated with the other person's behavior and therefore we wonder where it comes from and come up with a theory? And also, this behavior, is it really hurtful and detrimental for the person them th uh, themselves? Or is it merely unpleasant to us? Do we want it to change? And finally, it's good to consider what you contribute to the situation. <clears throat> Sorry. Whether maybe the other party's behavior is merely a reaction to you. Uh, think of Schulz von Thun's vicious circles here. And of course, it's always easier to change ourselves than to change other people. So we should consider whether we can change our behavior to better adapt to the other person. Think of Schulz von Thun's styles of communication where he gave um, advice in several cases how to deal with people who use a certain style towards us and how to deal with that in a positive way. The advice given by Thomas Gordon is to use active listening. Active listening is a technique developed by Carl Rogers that we will discuss in more detail in the future. For now, let me just say a very important basic idea is that we allow the other person to talk, to explain and to describe, and we don't charge in with our own attitudes and ideas and point of view. So, for example, if someone is describing a problem they have towards us, we don't go in and say, oh yeah, this is your own fault because, or I know what to do, you will do this and uh, this and that, or um, if we um, analyze, oh, I know what the issue here is, what you always do is, and so on. But we just take a step back and let the other party talk and proceed and um, we allow the other party to better understand the issue through this conversation and maybe to come closer to an actual solution. Uh, keep in mind Stephen Covey's advice from his seven habits here, where he uh, stated in habit number five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. And I think this is pretty good advice here. If you would like to actually approach another person with a theory, um, specific uh, advice I can give you here is first, to use an I message. So don't state your theory as a fact by saying you are like this, but say I got the impression that or I think that. And also don't uh, start with a theory right away, but start by describing your observations. For example, by saying, I noticed that you are quick to anger lately and the, that you um, are often upset, such as earlier when we had this situation with that colleague or yesterday when that happened and last week, you know, when this um, and so on. And finally, understand that you can make an offer, you can offer your help, but the motivation for change finally has to come from the other person. So if they accept your offer, of course, you can help them, give them advice as they desire. However, if they reject your offer, you have to accept that and you should not try to pressure them. <clears throat> finally, if you 
uh, actually have someone in your surroundings who you believe might really suffer from a mental problem, from a, psych from a psychological problem, and you think um, it would be important for them to get, uh, to get professional help. Um, in such a case, you can maybe take a look at a problem that is called mental health first aid. Just as with physical first aid, you learn how to support and how to help people who have um, psychological problems, who are suffering from mental disorders. This program was developed in Australia by one Betty Kitchener and one Anthony Yorm, but it is now available in a lot of countries, so um, the courses are available in a lot of uh, places. And I think this is a pretty good approach because it helps people to better understand psychological problems and also to clear up some uh, prejudice and misunderstandings. So um, I can recommend to uh, um, have a look at that. If someone gives the video a like, I always take this as a sign of a great personality. And if someone subscribes to the channel, maybe even writes a comment, wow. We will see each other next week when we discuss um, personal development using the inner team by Schulz von Thun. For today I'll take my leave. Have a nice day. See you next time.